I've been wanting to do this video for a long time now, and with everyone's New Year's resolutions coming around and new athletic goals with the start of the new year, I thought this was a perfect time for me to share with you guys some of the best lifts for aspiring college athletes. In this video, I'm gonna be outlining some of my favorite lifts that I like to do in the gym, as well as explaining to you guys what I'm thinking about during each of these lifts. At the end of it, I'm gonna share with you guys an exact workout plan for each of the three days that you can do in the gym. We're gonna be breaking down a wide variety of lifts from upper body to legs to Olympic lifts. So I'm gonna be giving you guys plenty of options of things that you can do in the gym. Now something that's important to note is that there's plenty of side effects and plenty of things that can go wrong in the gym. So make sure to talk to a doctor, order a coach before just running and going in the gym and just throwing some weight on the rack. Additionally, when I go to the gym, I like to make sure that I'm wearing the proper equipment, whether it be compression shorts, great shorts, but most importantly, the right flat bottom shoes. Now I currently have on some Converse, but I typically don't like to lift in those as they're a little bit loose in the ankles, so I really like to prefer the Nike Metcons. You guys can go with whatever you want though, flat bottom shoes. All right, now that you guys know a little bit more about what exactly to wear to the gym, I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit more about proper stretching and proper warm-up. So before all of my lifts, I like to hit a dynamic warm-up. If you guys haven't seen my dynamic warm-up already, make sure to go check me out on TikTok or check out my YouTube short. A dynamic warm-up really combines stretching and getting your heart rate up, whether it be jumping jacks, push-ups, squats, moving your arms around, getting your legs engaged, anything to kind of get your heart rate up and get a little bit of a sweat going before you get into the lift. After I hit my dynamic warm-up, I like to hit five to 10 minutes on either the bike or the treadmill. This allows me, again, just to get my heart rate up a little bit more and really prime my body before the lift. And after that, I'm ready to lift. So without further ado, let's get into everyone's favorite day, upper body. So for all of my upper body lifts, I like to focus on the three main groups, my biceps, triceps, and my pectorals or my chest. Now sadly, there's gonna be no curls in this workout today. As the saying goes, curls get the girls. However, I don't think there's a whole lot of value that curls would provide in an upper body workout like this, as curls really contract your muscles and we wanna be elongating and stretching our muscles in order to build better muscle retention. Additionally, curls just kind of make you really stiff and aren't really great for dynamic ability. You can't really move around and stuff if you're building your muscle like this, so not really the best lifts for aspiring athletes. So instead, we'll be focusing on three lifts, dumbbell bench press, lat pull down, and dumbbell chest flies. First up, we have dumbbell bench press. I personally prefer dumbbell bench press as opposed to traditional bench press, as it really makes sure that you're focusing on the mobility in your shoulders, as well as balancing the two dumbbells. When I do dumbbell bench press, I typically don't like to have my arms out at 90 degrees. Rather, I have them at 45 degree angles. This really makes sure that I'm not isolating my shoulders in the lift and just focusing on them, but I'm also engaging my lats when doing them at 45 degrees. This specifically helps me as I've had tons of shoulder injuries over my career. So it's super imperative to make sure that you're very cognitive about where your arms are in this dumbbell bench press movement. Additionally, another take that you can do on this exercise Exercise is alternating dumbbell bench press, where you're alternating one arm going up and the other going down. This really makes sure that once again, you're balancing the weight and focusing on where that arm movement is going. You can also do this to really help strengthen one arm over the other if one's coming back from an injury or weak. When I'm doing dumbbell bench press, I wanna make sure that I'm always accelerating through the top of the lift and not struggling to get it back up. Typically when I do dumbbell bench press, I like to do one warm up set followed by three main sets ranging from four to eight reps. Up next, we have the lat pull down, which as you probably guest really focuses on your lats and engaging your back. I really like to focus on this exercise, especially when I was coming back from my injury, as it was due to my weak lats that was putting all the pressure on my shoulders. When I'm doing this exercise, I really like to make sure that I'm focusing on having a tight core so I'm not slouching over and causing injuries again in my shoulders. Bad posture can easily lead to injuries, so make sure that it's something you avoid and always think about your posture when you're doing all these lifts. Now for this exercise, you can either have a wide grip or a narrow grip. However, I like to do something a little bit in between. When you're doing this exercise, you wanna make sure that you're moving slowly and feeling all of your muscles be engaged. Focusing on slowly contracting the muscles as well as the slow release on the way back up, make sure that you don't get injured and getting the most out of the exercise. When I do lat pull down, I'll do one warm up set and then a following with three main sets ranging from eight to 12 reps per set. Last on the upper body routine, we have dumbbell chest flies. And I can guarantee you, 
these are nobody's favorite. However, this exercise is super important as it focuses on your biceps and triceps, maintaining and controlling the weight while exercising and stretching your chest. When starting out in this exercise, you wanna make sure to use a really light weight. Even after years of rehabbing my shoulder, I'm just now getting back to 25 pound dumbbells and it's very, very hard. You can do this exercise with your elbows bent or with your arms fully extended outwards. Something you wanna focus on during this exercise is really controlling the weight on the way down and then pushing back to the top and accelerating back to the top. Similar to the other exercises, I like to do one warm up set and then three main rounds where I do six to eight reps per round. Now that finishes off my three favorite upper body exercises and here is the upper body day workout. Up next, we have the day that everyone loves to skip, leg day. However, this is arguably the most important day as so many sports are very much leg driven. From jumping in basketball to pushing off a wall in swimming or running in track or football. Leg day is super important and there's plenty of great ways to get some work in. However, here are my three favorite exercises for leg day. First up, we have leg press. Now, I personally prefer the incline leg press as opposed to the zero degree leg press. However, they both work similar muscles. Now, it's super important to know how to use this machine before just jumping in because if you don't, you could get badly injured. When I do this exercise, I make sure that my feet are shoulder width apart and that they're not going to move. When doing your first rep, you want to make sure that you're getting a lot of depth on the way down and moving slowly down and then accelerating back up to the top by pressing against the leg press but not fully extending your legs and locking out your knees as that will cause a lot of pain and injury in your knees in the long run. Depth is really what we're going for here and that is what's going to be building the muscle so make sure to choose an appropriate weight that you can get a lot of depth even if you have bad knees like myself. When I do this exercise, I do one warm up set where I'm really just focusing on depth and then followed by three main rounds doing six to eight reps per round. Next up, we have quad extensions. For this exercise, you're gonna be focusing on a weighted extension of your legs in order to build muscles in your quads, most specifically the front side of your quads. It's important when doing this lift to go slow on the way up as well as on the way down. And you're not just throwing the machine up and down as you're not gonna be getting a bunch out of that and the muscle really builds when you're moving slowly and slowly contracting these muscles back and forth. It's a super simple exercise if you just follow the instructions on the machine and as like I said before I do one warm-up set three main sets and on this exercise I like to do six to twelve reps per set. Now on the quad extensions earlier we really focused on the front side of your quads whereas on these cart curls slash towel curls you're really gonna be focusing on the back side of your quads. This exercise can be done with a towel on a smooth floor or with one of those exercise carts. I don't know what they're called. Basically all you have to do for this exercise is put your heels on the towel or the cart, get your hips up and off the ground so you're engaging your core and move your legs back and forth. Not only will this engage your core, but it also should feel a stretch on the back side of your quads if you're doing it correctly. Move slowly and you'll really feel a good stretch here and you'll be building muscle in the back side of your quads. This is a great stretch that anyone can do at home, without a gym, you name it. When I do this exercise, I like to do three rounds at 10 reps each. Now that finishes my three favorite exercises from leg day. Here is the full leg day workout. Finally, we have Olympic lifts, which incorporates the upper body and lower body lifts and is great to incorporate into any one of the lifts that you do. I personally like these three lifts and I used to do them on a weekly basis when I was a D1 athlete. First up, we have my favorite, cleans. Now this exercise has a lot of components and I'm gonna go over some of the basics of it. When starting a clean, you wanna pick the barbell off the ground with a more narrow grip than you would a traditional Olympic lift. Pick up the bar off the floor and just hang the bar just above your knees. When initiating your clean, make sure to drive with your legs as this is your main source of power, not your arms. Make sure to push through with your legs and just get under the bar with your elbows up, catching it in kind of a half squat. Now you can catch the bar a bit lower in a full squat if you want, but I like to do it a little bit higher given my size and then fully extend up and through to finish off the exercise. When I do cleans, I do one warm up set with just the bar, really focusing on getting some depth and warming up my knees. And then I go into three main sets ranging from three to six reps per set. Our next exercise is squats, and I'm gonna demonstrate both front and back squats, as I believe they both have very similar components. First off, for both of these exercises, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your feet are shoulder width apart and you're maintaining a strong core. For back squats, I like to place my arms a little bit farther apart on the bar and make sure that my fingers wrap around 
side rings on the bar. When I'm going down in the back squat, I'm focusing on my breathing and on my core. Upon getting down to my proper depth, I then proceed to accelerate up back to the top as if I'm pushing off a wall, like in swimming. When doing a front squat, you're gonna wanna keep your hands more inward like you would in a clean and keep your elbows up, similar to how you catch the clean. Then similar to a back squat, you're gonna wanna slowly go down, get the proper depth, and then explode back up to the top. When I do front or back squats, I'll do one warm up set with just the bar, and then I'll do three main sets, ranging from four to eight reps per set. Finally, our last exercise of the video is trap bar deadlift. Now you can just do a regular deadlift. However, I prefer trap bar deadlift as I feel like I have a little bit of more control and it's a lot less strenuous on my back. I use a lot of the same techniques that I used earlier in the squats, keeping my feet shoulder width apart, and engaging my core. When moving the bar, I like to focus on going down very slowly to strengthen my knees and then accelerating back up again, similar to how we did earlier in the squat. And throughout all of this, you're gonna wanna keep straight arms on the trap bar. When I do trap bar deadlift, I'll do one warm up set really to get my knees activated. And then after that, I'll do three rounds at four to six reps per round. If you guys want a full day of Olympic lifting, here's the workout I'd recommend trying out. Now that you guys have all these great exercises, what are you waiting for? Go get after it. As I mentioned earlier, there's tons of precautions you guys should take when lifting. Make sure you're wearing the right equipment and always go talk to a doctor or a coach before going and starting lifting. If you guys like this type of video, make sure to like the video and comment which lift you guys are most excited to try out. Make sure to subscribe to the channel as I'm gonna have the best dry land and ab exercises coming very soon to the channel and you're not gonna wanna miss it. With that said, best of luck to everyone in their lifts and I'll see you guys next time.